Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. <laughs> Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we love you, Lord, because you first loved us. And you have given us your word. And above all, given us understanding of your word. What a privilege. Thank you, Father. Our hearts are filled with gratitude today because we know things, burdens shall be removed. Yokes are being destroyed right now, even as your truth comes forth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. So, so we're looking at book of Psalms chapter 14. We're still talking about issues of the heart. We're talking about living the life. Now he says, oh, I love this, verse 2. Let me start from verse 1 again. Oh, we started yesterday talking about this. He said, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. That's his conclusion. And like I've always said, you, will never, you may never hear that person say with his mouth that there is no God. But he says it in his heart. Meanwhile, in, in verse 2, he says, The Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there is any who understands who seek God. Why would you seek God? Because you believe. Why would a fool say there is no God? Because he doesn't believe. It's as simple as that. Praise God. So, so now then, you, I was telling you yesterday that God is, is looking down at men. And I told you how he does it. He throws things at you. I was talking about Abraham yesterday. He told him, take your son, your only son, and go offer him up as a sacrifice on one of the mountains of Moriah. And Abraham thought about it. And then he understood something. Listen, oh, and, 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 and you know, that's why many times you don't see miracles happen in your life. And you're wondering, I'm a Christian, I've been a Christian for so long. How come I've not had any tangible miracle? This is where the problem is. Now, when you come to the place of understanding, miracles will become normal. I mean, so normal that you will be sharing things with, with, with people like, oh, this is what God, then they'll be looking at you like, are you from this planet? You know, sometimes you hear people say, is it the same God that we believe? Or is it the same church we attend? Or is it the same Bible we read? You know, you've heard people talk like that, you know. Talking about, an, yes, the, man, I don't think it's the same Bible we read with, those kind of, with, those, with that guy or with those people. Why? Understanding. Because you don't see the kind of result in your life they see. So you're like, mm -mm, I don't think we're doing the same thing. Something is, something is just not complete somewhere. What is missing? Understanding. Understanding. So Abraham came to that place of understanding. What did Abraham understand? God gave me this boy. And when he came, God told me to drive away Ishmael because that in Isaac shall my seed be. I remember God said that and, and he cannot lie. So if he has said, in Isaac shall my seed be. And then now he's the same person telling me to go offer up Isaac. So if I offer up Isaac and Isaac dies, what happens to his word concerning my seed? Knowing that he cannot lie and his word cannot be broken. So what's the way out? What's God up to? What's he trying to do in this whole situation? And then Abraham thought of it that, hey, the only end I see here. Because as for me, I'm going to obey God. If he says, kill your son, I'll do it. But it's strange in, in the first place for him to tell me to kill my son. Anyway, but he is God. He is able to raise the dead. Oh, I get it now. If I kill my son Isaac, he will raise him from the dead. But he wants me to obey now, 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 that's why he didn't bother sharing this with anybody. 
You see, when you, come to, when you come to the place of understanding God, most times that journey is a lonely journey. I'm telling you the truth. A lonely. It's not something we will all understand him. Now, now, when God begins to lead you by faith, it's a lonely walk. That's why Jesus said narrow is the path that leads to life. And few, it is few that find it. So you see why Abraham didn't bother telling his wife? Because how do you explain to your wife that I'm going to kill this boy? But listen, I'm too convinced in my heart that God will raise him from the dead. And that was what got to God. Why? Because God found in Abraham a man that understood him. Praise God. That's what gets God excited. That, that, that's what I was telling you earlier. The, if you want to see supernatural things happening in your life, Understanding is the key. And God looks at you and said, You have got him. You remember that, that, that guy that came to Jesus? And, and he asked Jesus, Oh, I love this. I love this. In the book of Luke, he asked Jesus, He said, What was the first commandment? The man asked Jesus, He's a scribe. And then he asked Jesus, What was the first commandment? And Jesus answered him, said, The Lord God is one God. And, and this is it. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So the man asked Jesus, and this was the answer Jesus gave. And then the man said to Jesus, he said, Yeah, you are right. Now, now think about it. This is Christ. He's a teacher of the law. And then he's talking to Jesus. And he asked Jesus, and Jesus answered. And he said to Jesus, like a teacher would say, You are right. Very correct. And he now explained why, Jesus, why he said Jesus was right. And what was his explanation? He said, you're right. You know, because God does not desire so much in sacrifices and offerings, but that a man should love him with all his heart, with all his mind, with all his understanding. And he says, and to love his neighbor, he said, it is more important than any sacrifice that any man can give. Well, and what did Jesus say to him? He said, man, you are not far from the kingdom. Praise God. That's what Jesus said. To him. You know why? Because Jesus saw in him a man who understood. This man has come to that place of understanding. He has gotten an understanding of who God is. Because sometimes people think, anything I do, ah, to make God, please, let me just take an offering to God and give him an offering. He will forgive me. You know, people think like that. As though God is hungry for their money. They think they can bribe God. Nah, 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 nah. God doesn't desire in all those things. But that a man will love him. And what does it mean to love him? It means to seek him. It means to understand him. To seek the knowledge of him and to understand him. So now you see, he, he says here that a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. So because he doesn't believe that there is God, he doesn't seek God. Why would you seek God that you, you have said doesn't exist? Now there are many ways people say God does not exist. And, and sometimes you don't know that you're actually saying that. But you are indeed saying so. Funny enough, you see people... Maybe someone comes to you to complain about something and, and, and the person says, can you imagine how this person treated me? You know what? I can be everything, though, but I will never be a fool. I will never be a fool. They think I'm a fool because I'm keeping quiet. I, I will show them that I'm not a fool. So what are you going to do? I'm going to take them on. Hey! Now, you are saying, it is amazing now. You are saying, I will show them that I am not a fool. And what's your next line of action? The display that you are a fool. You say, what do you mean by that? Yeah. Now, when you say, I will show them that I am not a fool. Now, you're supposed to be, now I'm talking about Christians now. You're supposed to be saying, I will show them that I believe that there is God. And then, okay, so what's your next line of action? I'm going to take revenge. Now, the moment you say, I will take revenge or I will take vengeance, what are you saying? I don't believe God is going to take vengeance, so I've got to do it myself. And then God looks at you and says, nah, this is a fool going somewhere to happen. Why? Because he has said, vengeance is mine. I will repay. So the one who's not a fool, he feels that thought in his, come up in his heart like you've got to take vengeance. Mm, 
you know what? If, if not that I believe in God, I would have taken vengeance. But I'm going, I'm going to hold my peace because God will handle this matter. Watch and see how God is going to handle this matter. Now that is the one who has shown that there is God. That's the one who has shown that he has understanding. Praise God. But the one who says, listen man, I'm tired of being, you know, some people say, look, look, because, because I'm a Christian, you want to take me for granted, I will show you that I, I lived on the streets too. <laughs> you know, you, you know, people, people say these things and, and, and they think, they think they are sizing up to life. And sometimes you find people, you know, you're dealing with an issue. So let's pray. Say, which prayer? I'm talking about being pastors inclusive. And sometimes you find, you find people say, oh, why are Christians not do it? Oh, the reason Christians are not doing it is because they pray too much and act too little. So what do you want them to do? Yes, it's important they act. And sometimes they say, you know, yeah, I've, I've seen this happen several times. You know, he said, let's pray concerning this situation. Look, 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 we've been praying. This is the time to act. And then you want to ask yourself the question, act in what direction? And most times when they say act, you know what they want you to do? Act like the world. Act like an unbeliever would act in this situation. So they say, we've been keeping quiet for too long. You know, especially, you know, you know for example, in our nation, we've, 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 we're, we're going through a phase. You understand what I'm talking about? And then you, you, you see that kind of a, a, a similarity to oppression. You're seeing this working, you know, in, in, in our nation somehow. And it, it, it gets people emotional it gets people angry but then you find believers who experience a bit of this thing and then they get they get to that point where they snap and then they say you know what we are tired so they say we are tired of keeping quiet we are going to act they say no why don't we pray pray what we have been praying okay so no complete the statement no, completely. When someone says, but we have been praying. And, and, and what's the completion of good? It sounds like you're saying in your heart, but God is not answering. <laughs> so so let, let's take action ourselves and trust that God will help us. You have not been praying. That's the truth. It's about we pray all the prayer meeting. Well, what do you pray on to? If you've not heard God speak to you, if you've not heard God tell you what to do, that tells you straight on, you have not been praying. Yeah, but, 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 yeah. you know, James said you pray. You ask and you, you receive not. Why? Because you pray amiss. And what's your thought? That you will consume it upon your enemies. That, that, that you, you're thinking, as long as your prayer is, oh God, come and fight these people. They are oppressing us. Come and deal with this. Oh God, come and deal with these people. Now, as long as that's the prayer you're praying, God's not going to answer you. Study scriptures. No, no, no. Study scriptures. Be, be, sometimes, carefully look at scriptures. When you see, when the, even the children of Israel, when issues came up and God rose up on their behalf, notice the prayer they prayed always starts from the place of mercy and forgiveness. They ask God to forgive them first. But we always think we're on the right. They are wrong. So God, come and deal with them. No, that's not how it works. You see, when you get to that place where your heart, I mean, you get to that place of snapping, is to just tell you that you yourself have walked in iniquity for this long. Say, which iniquity? You know, that's the problem. Most times when you talk to people about iniquity, they think fornication, and but I've not done all, any of those things. The fact that you don't seek God to understand Him itself is iniquity. So you get to that point where you are arrested and you're locked up for no reason. And then you are, God, you have to deal. Hey, why, why didn't I hear God, tell me that they were coming for me and what to do. It just means that I've not been fellowshipping with him. I've not been listening to him. Yeah. So now I'm in trouble. I need to come out of trouble. What do I do? The first thing you need to do is to ask God for mercy. Lord, I admit I have not been seeking you properly. 
I admit I have not been walking in, in, in real righteousness with you. And that's why this situation has got into this point. So Lord, I want to ask for mercy. If you start your prayer from that premise, then you see, you are expressing faith in him. But if you think you're going to pray, oh God, deal with this. And these people that locked me up in this thing, these people that came to spoil my, my business, these people that came, oh God, you must fight, you must deal with it. Now this thing happens in every aspect of our lives. Listen, tomorrow I'm going to be talking to you in the, in, in the setting of marriage, how these things affect marriages. Because you need to understand and stop being a fool. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for the healing that is taking place because of your word. Many hearts are being healed right now. And they are coming out of that place of ignorance to your knowledge. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. Until then, bye-bye.